Good afternoon to you, Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. It is Tuesday, the 19th of October, 2021. Time for the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. And I want to say hello to you folks on Spotify, Anchor. Uh, they are allowing my channel, as it were, to upload video for the first time. So hello there. This is the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. Normally, it is only on YouTube. Now, we are on YouTube and the Spotify world, and we'll see how that grows and where that goes. And it's great to be here. So hello. If you're seeing me for the first time through Anchor Spotify, welcome. Howdy. How you doing? So what are we going to talk about today? Well, yesterday we mentioned how things were so quiet in the Atlantic, and I was trying to figure out why, what's causing this. And I saw this tweet thread here, starting with Andrew, uh, about how the long-range forecast that we saw several weeks ago for a very busy October has been a complete bust. And that's good. People need a break from the hurricanes. We have enough problems going on in the world. Yes, I am here uh, for mainly the purpose of tracking hurricanes. This is what my business is based around. But even I need a break from time to time. And so we've had that. So why? Why in the face of La Nina, which normally promotes much more favorable conditions, and that's what Andrew mentions in this next part, La Nina typically fosters development in the Western Caribbean and gives us a lot of activity, kind of like what we saw last year. Uh, last year was a, a bit of an anomaly. We saw way more activity than we are normally supposed to see, I think. Uh, so then different people start chiming in, and that's the beauty of social media, if you know how to use it and who to follow. So Andrew is talking about this. You know, hey, why did it just stop? And then we see Andrew talking about what I mentioned a little bit yesterday, that this trough developed in the upper levels of the atmosphere, and this has been in place for the last several weeks. This upper trough, the air is converging in this trough. It's coming together. It's not divergent where it is spreading out. And you have the strong uh, southwesterly flow that's in here, lots of shear. And this is just the overall composite. This is basically a big negative sign for development. In fact, we can just draw a big old red X in here. This shuts everything down. We did have the positive height anomalies or higher than normal pressures over southeast Canada, but for whatever reason, trapped between this favorable sign, we'll put a big positive here, and the deep tropics down here, the western tropical Atlantic and the Caribbean, between those two was this big negative. Now, that's easy to see. We can say that's why, but why the why? You know what I mean? What caused that? And that's the thing that a lot of people are starting to try to figure out. It could have to do with where the Madden-Julian oscillation really set up. The upward motion, the standing wave of rising air might have been displaced just a little bit too far longitudinally, right? You know what longitude and latitude is in terms of where it is east to west. Just a little bit different this year so that it created that feature in just the right spot to shut things down. It's kind of like... Everything came together last year to give us this incredible October, November with a lot of activity. Eta, Zeta, Iota, Delta, Gamma, all that. Remember? Of course you do. Zeta there at the end of October. I was there for all of that in the U.S. The landfalls. This year, nothing of the sort. So everything just kind of changed and lined up just the right way since at least the last part of September through October here, this composite uh, that um, that Andrew put together here in his tweet is from the 3rd of October through the 16th. And, uh, um, yeah, that's Andrew Moore that put that together. There's two Andrews. Just realize that. Um, and then different people, again, talking about it. It's not really like an El Nino out there. There's two different peaks in the angular momentum. We get into a lot of technical aspects. But the bottom line is if the MJO was in the Western Pacific, then why didn't we see more of a tropical cyclone response to that convection in the Western Pacific? So one more sort of analysis on this, and then we'll move forward. If all of that rising motion was over in the West Pack, the waters are warm over there. They're always warm, even in La Nina. You get that warm pool. It's always there. Deep, warm water in the West Pack. Why didn't we see a flurry of major super typhoons. We did not. Everything was basically a big sloppy mess. And so globally, everything is suppressed right now 
and it's very, very odd. So we really haven't figured out the cause of the cause just yet. So stay tuned. We will put Shaggy and Scoob and everybody else on it and try to figure it out. Ha ha. All right, so to that end, in the Atlantic Basin, everything is nice and quiet. A little bit of a disturbance here in the Western Caribbean, some flare-up uh, of showers and thunderstorms there. But you can clearly see some turning going on down here in the Southeast Pacific. Uh, and that's part of the, uh, the way the wind pattern is right now, just kind of the trades blowing through and the different geographic features down here that are allowing this sort of cyclonic turning to set up here, this gyre, if you will, setting up down here instead of up here in the Western Caribbean like we saw last year. It's just displaced this monsoon trough and overall gyre pattern is in the southeastern Pacific this year. Uh, so again, it's timing and just kind of coincidence. There's a tropical wave right there. You can see it moving through the southwest Atlantic, or the tropical Atlantic anyway. Everything else is pretty dry over the lower 48 for the time being. Uh, rel relatively, like, like really dry there. Uh, some upper level energy here over the Rockies creating some snow showers in the higher elevations. And then this is a very good thing to see, a mid-latitude storm coming in. Yes, we will be getting ready to talk about lower 48 weather more and more as we transition towards the off season, but it's not the off season yet. We still have hurricane season to go, so just keep that in mind. But yes, we will be talking about Pacific storms, even the threat potentially, believe it or not, of more severe weather in this area because of the way the pattern is shaping up. So lots to talk about, even if we don't have hurricane activity out there. The weather is always interesting, at least it is to me. So in the deep tropics, I showed this yesterday, it holds true today. No consolidated areas of energy or vorticity in the Atlantic. Nothing really congealing or coming together. This is trying to get together in the eastern Pacific, and we'll talk about that in more detail in a moment. Most of the energy is way up here in the high latitudes. I showed you that yesterday. Of course, it's not going to change much in 24 hours, but this is what we look for. Do we see anything like this over in the Western Caribbean, the tropical Atlantic, the Gulf, and just one little impulse there in the Western Gulf, but that's it. So for the you know, most part, by and large, things are nice and quiet. What about out into the future? Well, let's take a look at the operational GFS. This is the 850 millibar level, which is about 5,000 feet in the atmosphere. That shows us that vorticity signature. This is reality. This is a snapshot from a satellite, an analysis. This is a computer simulation going out into the future to see if any of these areas like that, like this, you know, like that, for example, do they consolidate and become bundled and round, and they're very easy to spot. So let's see what we get. Going out 24 hours, there's nothing really coming together. Uh, 48 hours, pretty much the same thing. And that just holds on through to day three. And maybe just a little weak area of showers and thunderstorms, a little impulse in the Bay of Campeche. Uh, but that's about it. Everything else, the trade winds are just blowing straight on through. No real curvature in there where the vorticity or the energy in the atmosphere is bundling in the deep tropics. Instead, by hour 96, four days out, very obvious, coming together again in the southeastern Pacific. Strong ridging here. You can see the outline of these height lines right here. Uh, and that's interesting because this will pump in deep moisture off of that very warm gulf into the southern plains and the severe weather set up later in October will be there again. It's like a May pattern in October. It's very odd. And that's true because what do you get in May? You usually you get East Pacific hurricane activity in May, especially mid-May on. So it's like we're doing May in October. It's just kind of odd. So that's day four through day five. Really not much out there. Day six and then finally day seven. We'll just stop there. A nice ridge parked over the Gulf. Florida will be toasty down here. Strong southwesterly flow, I'm sorry, southeasterly flow coming off the very warm Gulf, pumping that moisture into the southern plains. And again, we've got to watch for the possibility of some severe weather. I will talk about that in the coming days as we see it start to manifest itself. Meanwhile, this disturbance here goes on to develop. This is the eastern Pacific. 
Let's just scroll this out. Watch what happens. I was just there in Manz uh, Manzanillo. No, not quite. Mazatlan. And this gets going, and I just can't believe my eyes. It's, and that's a little bit further north than Mazatlan. But really? Like, it's literally like deja vu. Uh, so we'll watch that. I don't have any plans to go back there. It's too soon, and I have other things I have to deal with, as you may know from yesterday's update. So we'll see, hopefully, and I know hope is not a planning tool, I'll say that all the time. Hopefully that doesn't even happen, and it just goes on out into the Pacific and dies away, uh, so we don't even have to deal with it. But you folks there in Mexico, heads up, uh, in about a week, you could be dealing with, and, you know, do we even trust the GFS at this point? It burned me really bad, you know, with uh, Pamela looking like it was going to be really intense. But this is a concern as it comes up in there. We've got to watch this closely, and uh, I'll do that. I'll help you. I'll keep on top of it for you uh, through this discussion, all right? Now, this is really good news, and this goes back to the satellite animation right here, if I can draw on it. Uh, this piece of energy coming into the west coast of the U.S., this is really, really good to see for the moisture. We really need it. High elevation snows. Uh, some of those snows could be heavy. Yes, there could be the threat of flooding, mudslides, burn scar issues. Impacts do happen. Of course, that heavy rain there in about a week. That's a big one there. That event there coming up in about a week. Uh, that could be really significant. Maybe all the way down to parts of Southern California. Through the Intermountain West, the Shasta Mountains, down through the Sierras, the Wasatch and Utah. Yes, even maybe the Spring Mountains there west of Las Vegas. You never know. Um, but this is honest, let me tell you, you want to see this. you know. And it's not dry thunderstorms like we get during the monsoon. This is legit atmospheric river Pacific moisture that can really help with the drought and the reservoir situation out west. That's good for the economy, it's good for the people, it's good for morale. We want this. This is a case where bad weather, if we can just not do dumb stuff, you know, sometimes it's out of our control. We live at the bottom of a burn scar. Well, that's not being dumb. You just got to be ready and aware to evacuate. But that notwithstanding, I'm telling you, I want to put this in a positive light. We want this. This is a good thing to see. Uh, we just have to be weather aware and you know, ready to react uh, if we need to, if it's going to be a problem to us. So one thing we have to do, and I will ask our art department to do it, is we're going to squeeze a little Spotify logo right there. And now we are on Twitter and Facebook and YouTube. And the Spotify logo, if I'm not mistaken, is round and green and black. And we're going to put it right there, assuming everything goes according to plan with today's first video on Anchor slash Spotify. It'll be interesting. So if you're on Anchor, Spotify, or wherever this is going, once I post it there, share the video, get it out there. Let's let people know what we're doing here. And of course, don't forget, we are crowdfunded through Patreon, an app and website that allows you to shape the future of projects like this. There's the QR code. You can get involved anytime. It's not just for hurricanes. We do a lot of stuff, and if you want to get involved, that is how you do it. All right. All right. Well, that is it from me for today. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. Always good to have you along for the ride here as we talk about hurricanes and other interesting and potentially impactful weather. I am Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.